Well, good morning again. Uh, it is, a, and again for me, because uh, we did this service at 9 o'clock, but unfortunately the, uh, uh, the, the YouTube streaming uh, did not work. Um, and, well, we're just going to give it another try next week. Uh, we've got some really talented people working on all of this, trying to make all of these pieces of the equipment and the technology work together uh, so that we'll be able to stream. Um, we're just not quite sure exactly what happened, but uh, it seemed to be having some trouble with YouTube. So anyway, without any further ado, I would like uh, to, to uh, read the scripture for today and uh, then give you a sermon as a, as a Sunday morning uh, should, should be characterized by. Our text for today comes from the first chapter of John, uh, the first 18 verses, and this is, this is called the prologue of John, and, and in reality it just it, it is absolutely a, a, a beautiful poem, and it sets the stage for the entire gospel. Hear these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, nor of of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to Him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because He was before me. From this fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made Him known. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these words, these very special words about the Word who became flesh. We thank you for the gift of word and words. We thank you for the gift that they bring to us life and light. And we ask your blessings upon us at this time that again we might receive your word and be given enlightenment and life anew. Amen. In the beginning is just a great way to start any story. But frankly, it has already been used in this book we call our Bible. The whole thing starts that way. Back in Genesis, which by the way means origins, the author of Genesis starts out in the beginning when God created. Now we have another beginning. Uh, but not without reference to that first beginning when God created. Because when God created in the beginning, there was the Word right there with God. And that word was God, and was in the beginning with God, and was the one through whom all things came into being. Back to Genesis, where God spoke creation into being with a word. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. The word is God in action. Psalm 33, 6 puts it this way. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of God's mouth. The word of creation carried forth by God's breath is life. Without breath, there is no life. So the word breathes into being life. And this life is the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. 
John gives us a sort of behind the scenes look at the creation story. But principally, I think John is trying to tell us that what Jesus says later in this gospel is absolutely true. Jesus says, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. And that by turning up in the midst of human history, he is bringing a new creation, a new genesis, full of life and light. God is doing something new, just as in the beginning. God is shining light into darkness, breathing life into death, speaking the creative word into chaos and dismay. And in doing so, God is speaking God's very self into God's own beloved world and into each person in it. Deb Ridgway has written a beautiful poem entitled Waiting, and I think it captures a bit of that breathing life into each and every person. Hear these words. I have been preparing for a long, long time, but the waiting continues, and I know the preparation falls short. Can you find no room in this heart whose expectation is to rest in the swaddling promise of your saving grace? Come humbly, miraculously, and give old hope to new yearning. Unwrap Christmas in me. Tear into my tissue paper heart and find room for your new heaven and new earth to be born again. This time, may your coming shine brightly in, through, around, and beyond my heart. May this present grow from loving infant into fullness of love for all time, not simply at Christmas time. What God is doing on a cosmic scale, God is also doing in the particular hearts of each of us, bringing life and light, breathing the Spirit through the Word and speaking God's very self into ourselves. The prophecy of Jeremiah is coming true. God says, I will put my law, and, and you can read this, I will put my word within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. With the coming of Jesus, the new day is dawning for the whole world and for each and every one within it. They will each know me, God says through Jeremiah. Uh, but just how are we going to get to know God? Not even Moses was allowed to see God's face, only God's backside, only the wake of God's glory. No one, it was said, could see the face of God and live. We talk of seeing God in nature, in beauty, in the eyes of another. Uh, we speak of seeing God in works of compassion and of hearing God's voice through the scriptures. But John would have us know that the fullest expression, the complete revelation of God is in the Word made flesh, Jesus. As N.T. Wright puts it, if you want to know who the true God is, look long and hard at Jesus. Only God reveals God, and God does, throw, God does so through the Word that becomes flesh. And that word is Jesus. The writer of Colossians agrees, saying that Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together, for in him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. But God is not all that Jesus reveals. Jesus reveals who we are. We who receive him and believe are children of God by way of a new birth, not of the blood, 
not from physical desire, not from any human intention, but from God. In the third chapter of John, Jesus has a conversation with Nicodemus, who is a Pharisee and a leader of the Jews. And in that conversation, Jesus says to Nicodemus, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. In that conversation, Jesus also uses the terms born anew and born of the Spirit. The children of God are born of God, born to be images of the Heavenly Father, born to do just as Jesus does, which is reveal God to the world. You may remember that this is precisely what the Jews were called to do. They were chosen, they were blessed by God so that the world might know the character, the love, the mercy, and the justice of the true God. There is a section from the Hebridean altars that goes like this. Seven times a day, I work this hungry farm. I say to thee, Lord, why am I here? What is there to stir my gifts to growth? What great thing can I do for others, I who am captive to this dreary toil? And seven times a day thou answers, I cannot do without you. Once did my son live his life, and by his faithfulness did show my mind, my kindness, and my truth to women and men. But now he has come to my side, and thou, must take his place. We, children of God, born of God, are here to show God's mind, God's kindness, and God's truth. Jesus reveals the Father and reveals the children who are made in the image of the Father, born of the Father, and called to reflect the Father in all they do and say. And this doesn't have to be anything forced or worked up to. We are simply called to be who we are, children of the Father. Everywhere I went with my dad, people would look and say, oh, you look just like your father. Well, I didn't force myself to look just like my dad. I did so just because I was his genetic offspring. Our biggest problem is that we are too busy trying to be what we're not our own gods. The world doesn't need more gods. It needs more children of the one true God, born of God, reflecting the loving, creative, and redemptive character of their Father so that all will come to know God. They will each know me, God says, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Alistair McLean writes, as the moorland pool images the sun, so in our hours of self-giving, thou shines on us, and we mirror thee to others. And Amy Carmichael helps us with how we might begin that mirroring, that reflection of the Father. She says, a pilgrim looked at the reflection of a mountain in still water. It was the reflection that first caught his attention. But presently, he raised his eyes to the mountain. Reflect me, said his father to him, and others will look at you. Then they will look up and see me. And the stiller the water, the more perfect the reflection. We begin reflecting this gracious God, full of grace and truth, by being still, by being still before Him. The psalmist quotes God who says, be still and know that I am God. That's where it starts. The Word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth, the redeeming love of the Father comes through the Son to all. From His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. 
and fresh grace is what is needed. For the law, given through Moses, which was in itself grace, was not enough. Not only could we not keep it, we positively twisted it all out of proportion with our traditions and interpretations. And then finally, we mostly ignored it. We must be born anew, born of God. We need to be graced. What we cannot do, God does in Jesus, the Word made flesh. Rather than an external law no human effort can keep, the Word is, as Jeremiah foresees, written in our hearts. From His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. And this grace is continual. It is like the water that Jesus will give, so He tells the Samaritan woman at the well, which will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And this is for all. So it begins anew. In the Word made flesh, this great drama of God's kingdom coming, which is, says N.T. Wright, a play in search of actors. And there are parts for everyone, you and me included. By grace, through faith, we children of God are born of God, born anew, born from above, to live reflecting the love and the glory of the Father till the curtains close and the stage lights dim and the cast party begins, that great wedding feast, the supper of the Lamb. Let's pray again. Gracious God, we do look forward to that time that great feast, that supper of the Lamb. But in the meantime, you have us here. You have made us your children. Help us now to shine with your light. Help us now to bring life and light as you have done and to reflect the goodness and the kindness and the truth of God in the midst of this world. All so that all would know the true God Amen. Amen and Happy New Year. And may the peace of God be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>